benefits system and this week publishes its welfare bill. But is it being anything like radical enough? In the American state of Wisconsin, for example, they cut the number of people on welfare by 90% by introducing the principle that people ought to work if they're to get benefits. We invited the big thinker behind the American schemes, Larry Mead, to Liverpool to see if his ideas might work there. This is Anfield in Liverpool, where one in three are out of work. To an American, the numbers of British people who do not work is startling. Yeah, boy, this is George Orwell country, if I ever was. In America in the 1990s, we found a way to reduce the numbers on welfare by two-thirds. In Wisconsin, we reduced them by 80%. We simply stopped paying people just to live on welfare. We demanded that they work, and most people did. I see there was a store on the corner there called Discount Booze, which is pretty blunt. If they didn't work, they lost their benefits. It was tough love. That's what it takes to move people from welfare to work. Whether poor people and whether people on benefit work is not predominantly due to the state of the economy. It's due to whether or not government expects them to work. Do you think young men should be ashamed of not having a job? Uh, I would rather say they should be expected to have a job. Uh, so which team plays here? This is Liverpool Football uh -huh. Club. Everton Football Club on the other side of the yes. park. And apparently they're doing, they're both doing badly this year, is that no, right? No, Everton are doing too bad. Oh yeah? But I'm biased. <laughs> are they, are they My guide to Anfield is Ruth Little. She works on the front line of poverty in Britain. Yeah. She runs the community centre here and she explains just how difficult it is to get people back into work. Uh-huh. And we're now on our third, probably on our fourth generation of people who have never worked. And they don't really know what it means no. to work? No, no. If you're on benefits and you're getting your council tax paid, your, your housing paid for, yeah. if somebody offers you a job on a very low wage, then what's the point in going out to work? You owe it. In America, we spent a lot less on welfare and yeah. a lot more on work programs. Mm -hmm. The poorest still got help, but only if they worked or seriously tried to work. Ross Groves. Larry Mead. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. Ross chairs the housing and physical region oh. for the area. Um, Ruth knows everyone we bump into. If I can make my case for welfare reform in one of Britain's poorest neighborhoods, yeah. I well, think we I could make it across Britain. She, my argument involves three steps. The first, make government benefits and conditional on actually working. The big change that's coming is not that people will not get aid, but they will have to work for the aid. So now work is not a choice. Now, how do you think people react to that around here? Um, I think you're going to come up against some hardcore long-term, long-term unemployed who, who really yeah. think it's their God-given rights yeah. to be able to just sign on a dotted line and get money. Yes. Yeah. You know that thing. Yeah. Well, I live in Britain, and I, I, you yeah, know, dad, correct. Dad, I'm, I'm entitled. Yeah, th that's what's you know? changing. We're saying you're not entitled. Rather, we help you if you work. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you, you don't have a right to aid. You have rather a conditioned access to aid. And I think lots of people would welcome that. Yeah. Lots of people would welcome that. But so how do you inspire young people to get out and do something with their lives when this is all they see? It is difficult to believe that so many British people do not work. I was surprised to find that Liverpool has a shiny city centre with lots of new buildings. That's typical of many industrial cities. They may have lost their factories, but there has been new development of other kinds. In fact, so many new jobs have been created in the last decade that millions have migrated from around the world to take them. The work is there. So the second step of reform is to change the way the public think about welfare. 
that it's no longer cruel or mean to require someone to get a job. That it's wrong, in fact, to let people stay on aid too long for their own good. Local Labor MP Frank Field has long led the debate. Do you think the, that this message is coming through clearly from the leaders? Are they getting it clearly that that's what's required now? That is, no. people in benefit are actually going to be expected to work? Is that coming no. through, do you think? It's you coming through so. slowly. Yeah. And what I, what's so interesting is, given that there's such support in the country amongst the voters for it, who think that we yeah. need to move to a much clearer contract society. It's not exceptional to have this. After all, when you go to work, yeah. you get a contract of employment. Mm -hmm. When you become a tenant, you get a tenant's contract. Yeah. When you buy a house, you get a mortgage contract. One of the contracts should be through the welfare system. Yeah. So we're talking about restoring order to a certain extent. You are. So for them, work is a choice and not an obligation. Oh. And they don't want to make that choice. Benefit, instead of actually being thought of as something that tides you over yeah. till you get your next job, it's actually become a minimum income. Yeah. Yeah, which you get right. as of right, it's like a pension, you're drawing your pension, unless the work opportunity is so advantageous, uh, some younger people are not willing to trade the benefit yeah. in for a job. The final step is to reform how we manage the jobless back into work. This is a Job Center Plus, where I was shown what work was available. There appeared to be quite a lot. So at what point would they begin to get the benefit itself? Our reforms have been most successful where advisors follow up on clients to make sure they work. Forklift drivers. Staff must administer sanctions if needed. And there can be no delay between receiving benefits and being challenged to find a job. Job details. What chiefly motivates work is this authoritative approach. Your opponents will say that you are demonizing the poor, yeah. you're demonizing people who can't find work. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm doing that. In fact, I'm lifting the stigma that they bear for not working. By requiring and promoting work is what we're doing. We move them into employment and thereby enhance their status. In the community center in Anfield, I'm about to find out what people who live on benefits think of my ideas. But it's also Pantonite. Ruth Little is keen to show me an English tradition. Some of these kids come from pretty tough backgrounds. But I learned that they have helped write the play, sold tickets, and organized the performance. People here still do a lot for themselves and others. Before the performance starts, it's time to talk to benefit claimants. What do they think about requiring people to work? It's finding the jobs for the people to do. There's high unemployment now, so where do you want to suddenly get all these jobs from? When you say there are no jobs, do you mean literally nothing at all, or nothing above a certain wage, or nothing in a no, certain location? The jobs that are the jobs that people won't take because the wages are so bad. Okay, so it's that it's not that there are no jobs, but the jobs don't pay enough. Very few jobs, and what there is, the money's no good. Okay, so it's that they don't pay as much as yeah. being living on benefit. Mm. I've had um, a back to work analysis <clears throat> done by the job centre that says this is the amount of money we pay you. This is the amount of money you can expect to get on a minimum wage. The difference is a week, according to them, thirty pound. Mm -hmm. The way the situation is now, it's possible to live on benefits and then you make a decision about whether you would prefer to work based on the payoffs. You shouldn't view it as a choice. You ought to view working as an obligation that should come first, and then we will also aid you if you need it to make it. If you don't earn enough, then we will help you, but you must work first as a matter of principle, not a choice, an obligation. Is that a change yeah, that you'd I think, support? I think people should work. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe that somebody who's physically capable of working should just get money for free and not, not earn it. Well, what I was saying, which is really interesting, is that a lot of people on benefits are effectively choosing not to work. Do you all buy that line? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's easier now to get to claim benefits. All you have to do to claim benefits is ring up and speak to somebody over the phone. Yeah. Are you and say it's too easy? Yeah, basically, they said, right, these are my circumstances. You've got to fill in a piece of paper to say that you're looking for work. Yeah. That's the only proof that they have. 
Okay. I am a single parent of, of two daughters and I am on job seekers allowance at the moment. Mm -hmm. I've been unemployed for six months. Okay. It is horrendous. You can't live on benefits.